Hey guys, in this tutorial I thought maybe I'll do a little bit of a different uh, style because it's substance painter and it's more artistic and more and less technical. Um, I'll just speak through it. So right now I just opened up the model in Maya and quickly applied the automatic UVs. Then I went to uh, export and I exported this as a FBX file for uh, substance painter. Once I opened up the Substance Painter, I imported the model. And you can do the same because I'm providing the project files in the description. You can follow this uh, the same way as I'm doing. So I imported the FBX file and then I just went to check the UVs to make sure that everything looks good. And uh, it did. So the next step uh, obviously is just to bake our maps. So I went and set the resolution to uh, 2K and the only uh, other setting that I change is I set the anti-alias to 2 uh, just so maybe it looks a little nicer and everything else was just uh, default settings and then I just simply pressed uh, bake to bake the maps so that just takes a little a little time and the higher uh, anti-alias you set the longer this will take but as you can see, this didn't take too long. Once it was done, I went and turned on the shadows. And I usually like to set my value kind of low in the 25, 27 uh, range. Then I like to do a, turn on a couple other things like anti-alias. And uh, the net I just did just for fun, just for you guys, for the background. But anti-alias is important because I think it makes the model look more appealing and uh, the edges are important. Here I just played with the light a little bit, just holding down the shift key and uh, dragging, uh, left click dragging, you can change the lights. So the very uh, first material I decided is I went to the smart material and substance painter and I believe these are just default materials. I, I didn't download anything special. Uh, and I just grabbed uh, the wood one that I had. If you don't have that, just grab it from the Substance Library. Uh, all of these are available. So this one is called Wood Ship Hole. And um, I just simply dragged it on again with the automatic UVs and uh, just kind of taking a look and seeing how it looks. And then the next step is applying the wood just to the specific parts of the model that need to be wood and you can see on top i missed a, a piece uh, on both sides because i'm not actually focusing on the top part but i just did it uh, really quick but i'm going to be fixing that uh, in a minute all right so right now i'm just looking to see how that's looking just simply dragging the smart material on and uh, i like what i'm seeing the uh, one thing I was going to maybe see if I can adjust is the pattern, the actual wood pattern that comes with the smart material. So you can see I went to the pattern layer and just turn on the hardness just a little more. Uh, very subtle, just to give it kind of a stronger stylistic uh, look. All right, then I created an empty layer and uh, initially just dragged it above the smart material. So it's just a blank uh, empty layer and I called it wood detail. And my intention here was to uh, create kind of the uh, wood lines that you would have maybe like from the boards of the of building the treasure chest. So for that, I just went to very simple. I just went to my layer uh, settings and I just turned on the normal and the height and turned everything else off. And the height, I just gave myself a uh, indentation, indentation of minus 0.6 and I'm just playing with the lines I turned on the smooth line on top and just kind of started literally just drawing the line across not much uh, thought went into this just simply creating and I was okay with this not being straight I'm kind of I was going for kind of a cartoony organic look here I realized I can turn on the symmetry for the top part so I'm drawing the lines for the top of the chest and uh, you can see it's not perfectly symmetrical 
but I can fix that. Uh, I'm going to fix that in a minute. Some of the lines are actually going over the other part, the metal part, but it's symmetrical enough to uh, use the symmetry. All right, so then I'm just going to do the same very quick, just doing a couple lines. My symmetry is still on, right? So then I'm going to check the other side. And I realized that um, it's not perfectly symmetrical once again. So I'm going to turn the symmetry off here and manually do the touch ups. So just kind of extend the lines. Uh, a little more just on one side because the other side was fine and here I realized that um, you know the lines went over the metal so I just need to drag the uh, lines into the smart material because remember smart material now has a mask that we applied the black mask so that clears uh, any uh, extra extension that was going over onto the metal because now the normal map is actually under the black mask, right? So it's, and then um, I'm just drawing a couple more in the front. I don't have to worry about them being in the metal because again, it's under the black mask. So that's nice. And I'm just spinning around trying to see what else I need to do. I realized the bottom needs uh, a couple lines. Again, just breaking the wood up so it looks more, uh, a little more believable. And the last one is obviously the sides. So in here to bypass the ring, I had to go into the 2D view, so I switched the mode uh, from just 3D to 3D and 2D, right? So I can see the the texture being laid out, so I can bypass that uh, ring on the side. And here I probably could have turned on the symmetry, but this was simple enough where I just felt like I can just drag it on really quick. So in this view, as you can see, it's dragging the, it's creating the normal map detail, but it's bypassing the front geometry. So just a cool little trick. Then I went back into 3D mode. And at this point, the model was uh, only, you know, we've been doing this for eight minutes and it's already halfway done. So. It was just a quick little exercise. So now I'm looking to see uh, if I can, what would be the best way to change the flow of the UVs on the top. And because this was done, the UVs done automatic, I thought the uh, coolest trick and the fastest way to do it is just simply to duplicate the wood and remove the mask and reapply the mask just to the top part because that's the part I need to uh, rotate. So here you can see me selecting all the uh, proper pieces just only focusing on the top part only. And you can see that UVs are not lining up uh, well because this was again automatic. So to fix this uh, very quickly all we need to do is just change our UVs from and you can see me doing that here I went to the pattern of the duplicate uh, layer and I went to I selected the wood pattern and then in the projection I just simply changed it from UV projection to try try planar and you can see that kind of united the UVs on top and then I just simply rotated them so the uh, flow of the wood makes sense so it's horizontal instead of uh, diagonal. And then I made it 180 degree uh, turn. So now it looks like it's flowing the proper way. And with the uh, normal uh, lines, it actually looks really good. Now, another, one thing that I could have done 
is I could have also painted the normal uh, lines maybe with like a darker um, darker brush you know I, I, I could have done that to create shadows um, but again I was doing this kind of quick but if you're doing it on your end uh, I advise you to maybe create another color layer on top of the normal map and also to color, color in those lines um, here I made a third uh, duplicate and now I'm just changing the flow of the side uh, the board but because the clone when I duplicated the layer it was already set to try instead of UV projection it actually worked perfectly so that kind of took care of the uh, wood and the proper flow of all the geometry so I again I had to do this kind of a, a crazy trick because the UVs were done uh, automatically and so I didn't have much control over that but as you can see it was very easy to fix and control the flow by just simply creating a few different uh, versions right then I just created a wood folder and dragged all my my three um, layers into it so I can focus on the metal then in the smart metal I saw the uh, steel ruined Again, I believe it's the default one, but um, I just dragged it right under it to make sure that it's the wood kind of, it doesn't override the wood, so the steel is underneath. And then I went into the smart material and just turned off a couple uh, things to make it a little more stylized, a little less detailed. So I turned off the bumps and the smart material. And I'm just kind of looking to see what else makes sense. Uh, I left the dirt off because you can see it's just a little too much detail for this piece. I went to edge damage and I went to the height in the tab and, and uh, I tried to uh, lower the kind of the intensity of the uh, height. I felt like edge damage was just a little too strong. So instead of turning it off, I just turned down the, uh, the damage using the height slider. All right, so it's already um, 10 minutes in. It's pretty much, or almost 13 minutes in, but it's pretty much almost done. Now it's just a couple more artistic uh, choices and decisions. Here I'm actually creating uh, metal edge lines. You can see the edges. I wanted to create kind of a more um, edge lines on the on the corners. So I set that to uh, difference, and now I'm just going to adjust a couple different uh, variations to see what makes sense. So I'm here. I'm playing around and seeing if it actually looks good and it I felt like it did it added a little more detail to the model I like the uh, edges to be a little uh, lighter so it looks like maybe they're beat up the highlights so here I'm just adjusting a couple sliders and this is all again comes down to artistic choice to, to figure out what uh, you want and what makes sense in your piece The edge smoothness made a big difference, so I decided to go with 1.38. And all right, now I am going to create another uh, layer, and this is the one that I'm going to be using to paint in the black inside the keyhole because I just want to make sure that it looks like it's deep. So I just went to um, paint mode and just using the poly paint, um, just simply colored the, those polygons in instead of using the brush. And you can see that uh, it looks like there's more depth inside the, the keyhole, I think. I thought that made sense. 
Next, I wanted to play and see if I could uh, throw a color over the entire uh, model, kind of uniting the metal and the wood, which is simply doing a color uh, layer and changing the color layer to uh, soft light creates kind of a cool tint. And I went to try the blue and then I switched it to red to give it more kind of a warmer feel. So it's just a red color uh, right over the, both the metal and the wood. Then I went back to the base of the metal to see if maybe I want to make it a little more um, bluish. I think that's what I ended up doing. It felt still a little too generic and too uh, default kind of. I'm, I'm looking to see if I can create more of a stylized feel to the to the model. So I kind of gave it a bluish uh, metal tint instead of just gray. And then I jumped into the um, eye ray to see if I can do a quick render, kind of a polished render. So I tried a different, different, a few different environment maps. And this is just, um, again, completely playing around and trying to figure out what looks good as a final shot. As you can see, different environment maps really drastically changed the final image. So then I switched it to a clear color instead of the environment map. And here, uh, just adjusted the ground height to make sure that it looks like the treasure chest is sitting on the ground with the shadows. Uh, next, I tried the uh, to boost the saturation a little bit in the color, color correction. And then um, I just simply switched it to um, 10 minutes instead of, instead of 10 seconds just to see if I can get a better quality. And finally, here's the final uh, image. So, all right, so thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next video.